All right, so here's my really weird setup. So let's escalate it quickly. Either it goes or blows, right? I got motor sounds. Does she move though? Oh, sad day. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fixed-ish. And as you saw there in the beginning, had a few complications along the way, but we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, taking this finished assembly from the last episode, and we're gonna toss it back in this forklift. It wants to freely rotate. I need to keep it up in this position. So, got this piece of wire here. Get a little creative. There we go, now it's stay in place. It's really difficult to position these axle mounts once you have it up in the forklift, so that's why I wired them in place for the installation. It's difficult to do these by yourself, so I need to wire obstructions up out of the way. And what you're going to see here is actually that frame is bent right here. And it actually tightens in the gap to install this. And you're going to find out I had a heck of a time getting it back in there. I need an operator. Where's Peter Griffin when you need him? So I'm going to speed this up here for you so you can get an idea of how long this really took to get in there. Probably almost 30, 45 minutes to do it by myself. after these are all torqued in place. You have to go back and actually get the torque wrench on them, get them tight. Uh, this is what holds the axle in. You don't want these bolts falling off. Alrighty, so here we go on the next part. As you can see here, this is the what the mast sits on. And here's a brand new bushing. You gotta have a little bit of room there for grease. Plus this will get squeezed down a tiny bit once it gets put in there. Anyways, but in here, fairly excessive amount of clay. You can see that. But yeah, let's look at this one, it's a little more obvious. There we go. Let's see how that bushing is kinda mashed out right there. Let's see here. Yeah, you see how that bushing's just mashed out. So we're gonna take these bushings out and put in the new ones. My overall goal here was to fold in the bushing since it's split and just peel it out of there. And that did not work in this case. And you know what they say, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. My next option is using these non-ferrous non burrs. Get in here and we're going to carve this out. Just like that. I believe we're through. Oh yeah, and when you're using burrs, don't forget your safety mask along with glasses. Okay, 
And when you cut these things in half, like this, they become very pliable and they stay wherever you put them. So basically, this was pointless. So the next one I'll just cut in half and you'll see how quickly it comes out. There we go. Just like that. And then carefully clean yourself off. All right, so I get a little creative here. We're going to have to draw this. I have to draw this in. Draw this in. So because I'm working between a brake backing plate and the pumpkin, I was uh, very limited on space. So that's why I ended up trying to do it this way. Yeah. Yep, she crooked already. Okay. Yeah. I got that in super crooked. So let's escalate it quickly. Have that one installed. Had to take the backing plate off so I could get at it straight. Well, straight ish. Looks fairly square. Not really now. Hello. Oh, Jesus. See that shit? Mm. So you're going to just try to get it on the bottom? problem is, is then I can't get the socket on there. Okay. Is that going to work? In like sin. That was way harder than it needed to be. Okay, so just to recap, had to take the backing plate off to get access to push this bushing in. Uh, got so right here, I lost all my audio. My uh, mic gave out, but basically I installed new brake cables and ran those down to where the backing plates are going to be. They were uh, damaged from earlier when you saw the uh, frame bent something got up there and caught it uh, pulled those brake cables out So as I'm putting these new backing plates back on and those will get torqued down too. putting back on the new brake cables With a little creativity here. You can kind of get the hook pried forward and get the cable put on it um, Saves a little time that way you don't have to take the brakes apart and you can still get the hook on there and get it in position I uh, just need to be careful so as I'm getting this side done, we're going to show you how to put the E-clip back in here. And I like to call those Jesus clips because when they come off, you scream, Jesus! And you look for 10 minutes because you have no idea where it went. But got that pride on there okay. Um, get you a good shot in there of it hooked in. And then after I'm all done, I have to break clean out all these because there was some leaking fluid. Uh, the wheel seal of the hub was actually leaking previously. Not bad. I'll get that all break cleaned out and get everything nice and dry and oil free. And here we go with the other side. Uh, I got a little tighter camera view in this time. Just trying to show you how I route that in there and uh, the way I kind of finesse it in there. Um, that little stand I'm going underneath, that's actually where the cable rides, but it's so tight in there at the time, you can't really get it hooked well. So that's why I go underneath it. Once I get it up on that hook, 
then I will pry it in place so it can rest on that uh, standoff where it's supposed to. And right here, I'm pointing to where uh, that's supposed to ride. It just kind of keeps out everything's way as you're functioning your brakes and it doesn't get hooked on anything. And here we go again with the E clip, just trying to get it pried up in there. Uh, it's kind of a two handed operation, but it's really hard reaching up in there. I've tried everything from pliers to screwdrivers to um, pry bars. And really the best way is if you can get your finger in there, just kind of hold it in place and use a little screwdriver to kind of pop it in. I know it's foggy. I broke the lens on my camera, so. I have to get off the forklift. In the words of little John, 5011 time. Thank goodness the side shift, right? I believe, and like magic, I got the tires back on. Went ahead and I uh, got the hoses back on, main lift hose back on. Wheels on lug nuts, uh, torque down the bolts, and we're getting ready to take her off the blocks and give her a test whirl. Like I said, keep yourself fairly lined up. Either it goes or blows, right? We got motor sounds. Does she move though? Oh, sad day. My battery depleted. I'm in lift cut out, battery's dead. I had hearing protection and so I couldn't tell what I was hearing, but I wasn't sure if I was like running something over or dragging something. It was the new brushes in the motor. It sounded like those old school wind up car toys. Once the brushes get seated in, that noise will go away. As you've seen there, the job kind of went off the rails a little bit. Originally came in for resealing the differential case. Had to end up tearing the electric motor apart, reseal it. Uh, had to put new bushings in for the mast. Had to repair a wire that we found when we took the electric motor out. Uh, and sometimes that's just how these go jobs go once you start digging into them. But we had a successful finish here and get this back to the customer and get them going again.